52 October is only three weeks away. And I want you guys to get 1600. So here's how to get a perfect score on the SAT math section. The SAT math section is one of the easiest SAT sections. In my opinion, I feel like reading and math, a lot of students end up struggling with reading. So with the math section, you want to make sure you're able to maximize your score to the fullest extent. And how do you do that? Well, I'm going to share some key tips and tricks that you guys can use to make sure you boost your math score at least 200 points and hopefully get that 800 like I did on my second try. Now, the first tip, and this tip might be a little controversial because a lot of pe people think that they should take and do SAT math problems that are reflective of what they're gonna actually face on the SAT. One of the best tips I can give you all to help yourself on SAT math problems and any math problem in general, whether it be calculus, you know, BC Calc, uh, Calc 3 if you're in college, doesn't really matter. That's to face hard problems. You're facing hard problems, you're challenging your brain to think about math in new ways and whatever math topic you are studying, your brain will start being used to harder versions of that topic, right? It'll be used to harder problems of that topic. So when you're faced with easier problems, things become a bit, a bit more simple and you basically become more adept at solving math problems. And the whole idea is, hey, if you can do a problem in the hard version and the easy version should be very easy. And now let's say you encounter a math problem that's kind of hard. Well, thanks to our sponsor today, Tutor Eva, you can solve that math problem too. Tutor Eva is an AI math-based app that helps solve math problems that you give them. And these math problems can range from SAT problems or other math problems in general. Tutor Eva can tell you the math problem's answer as well as a breakdown of the steps to get to the answer in a matter of minutes. My favorite part is that Tutor Eva can solve math word problems, which other math-based apps cannot. And that is a big game changer. Also, Having an anime teacher is way better than having a real teacher. Am I wrong? A quick example is I pop this problem to Tutor Eva and then on my phone, you can literally see Tutor Eva gives you an entire breakdown of how to solve the problem. And this is a, this is a little easier problem, but there's harder problems that Tutor Eva can get like that on the fly. So if you guys ever need help while you're studying for the SAT math section, just ask Tutor Eva and she will help you. If you're having trouble understanding math for any exam, not just the SAT, and your current tutor just is not good enough, then you should highly consider checking out Tutor Eva so you can get an 800 on the SAT math section for this upcoming October. To check more details out, check the link in the description below. To use Tutor Eva, and I also want you guys to use Khan Academy because Khan Academy gives you a bunch of math problems that you can you know, use to practice, right? And if you need help, just ask Tutor Eva. But the whole idea with Khan Academy is that you can solve math problems that are usually harder than what you would face on the SAT. Because Khan Academy is now known for giving much harder math problems than you would face on the SAT. And a lot of students do like not like Khan Academy or don't use Khan Academy for the math section as much now. Because they're like, whoa, 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 in Khan Academy, the problems are way harder. I'm not even seized on SAT. Why am I trying to do this problem and wasting my time? There's, you have to find that healthy balance between doing Khan Academy problems that are obviously exponentially more difficult, as well as doing real SAT problems, okay? You don't want to do just one or the other. You want to try to mix in both because you still want to build your math skills overall, right? After SAT, real math comes in, with whether it be calculus or whatever you guys are doing statistics. So you still wanna make sure you have a strong math foundation. Second tip is to speed run the SAT math section because if you guys have seen my million view with videos, it's me speed running the SAT math section. And the reason they probably even got million views is because that's a very hard thing to do. And a lot of students can't do it. A lot of students can't even see themselves or envision themselves doing it. But I'm here to tell you all that you guys can easily speed run the SAT math non-calc section if you practice enough. You see, you guys can like see my course in the description below. You guys can see my YouTube videos. I discuss a lot of math tips and tricks that can basically can be applied to a variety of problems on the ST math section, right? And if you're able to use these tricks, find these patterns in these problems, then you can constantly, you know, answer problems super fast because a lot of problems follow the same pattern. A lot of tricks apply to the same problems. So some of these problems goes down from like two minutes per problem to like two seconds per problem. And at that point, you can literally finish all 20 questions within like five, six minutes. And that's how you speed run the ST math section. And by doing this, you're not only proving to yourself that you can detect patterns and tricks quickly, you're going to feel more confident. And a confident test taker is one of the most dangerous test takers because they are the ones who usually end up getting a high score because they're not doubting themselves. They're not second guessing their, their knowledge, their, their knowledge base. They're using exactly what they know, executing it and just moving on to the next problem rather quickly. So please, I want you guys to be able to speed run the SAT math section before you take your real SAT. And that is one of the most powerful things you can possibly do. And then my next tip, and this tip is something that you guys have been practicing since kindergarten maybe, or first grade, 
and you guys don't even realize, and that is sharpening your mental math skills. You see, the SAT, as much as it is a pen and pencil exam, is that much more a mental exam because, okay, first of all, the timing is crazy, right? But the SAT math section, one of the best ways to even speed run it is by being able to do a lot of mental math problems quickly. You see, what takes longer, to think or to write? To think, to write, I definitely messed that up. It takes longer to write than to think. And if you're able to find the answer to the math problem within your head, then you're able to solve that problem way quicker than you would if you were to write down each step to solve that problem, right? And that's where mental math comes in. A lot of times, you'll see that you don't have to finish the problem. You might only have to write down two steps, then your brain can fill in the rest of the steps in your head in like two seconds and you'll be you'll find the answer to your question. You don't actually have to you know, write down each step. So that's why I want you guys to practice your mental math skills because it just helps you speed run problems way faster, it helps you solve problems faster, and also it's less work on your hands. And we need, you know, you need to save your hands for the SD reading section because that, that's where you, you know, annotate. And that's coming before the SD math section, so your hands are probably tired anyways, right? So let's not focus on that. Let's only focus on trying to use this in your brain. Obviously, you can't do everything in your brain. Some problems are a little more convoluted. So you have to write certain things down. I understand that. But otherwise, I want you to try to do as much math as you can mentally without getting the problem wrong. My last tip is to eliminate three, don't choose one. This is a math, SD math psychology uh, trick that I've been preaching for a while now. You don't always want to, when you look at a problem, you don't want to just think, okay, which one's the answer? No, you want to think which one is not the answer, which ones are not the answer, right? And by eliminating the each answer choice as you do the algebraic steps for that problem, you're gonna end up with only one answer choice much quicker than you think. What a lot of students do is they end up, you know, solving the math problem, writing down every single step, and then they're, okay, x equals 17, let me circle 17. But maybe three steps ago, you realize that x has to be positive and three of the four answer choices were negative. You can already cross those three out and you're left with the answer. That's why I highly recommend, one, don't finish the problems. Two, you know, obviously use mental math. And three, have that, have that mindset of eliminating three answer choices and you know, don't just try to find that one. Right? Just eliminate three and obviously if you eliminate three, the last one is your answer choice. Trust me, this mindset might seem a little like, like bro, obviously, no. It's something that is very powerful. If you guys go into the ST with this thinking, and like I said, the ST is a big psychology test, right? As much as it is, you know, writing and pencil and solving problems, it's also a lot of psychology. So this is the best psychological trick I can give you guys for the ST math section. So please do this. If you guys do this, I almost guarantee success. Check out Tutor Eva. Thank you all for watching. Good luck. Peace.